Imagine what an innovation it would be if you could add 20 to 40% to an electric vehicle's range. So the average uh, vehicle EV now has a range of about between 400 and 500 kilometers. So if you added another 100 or 200 kilometers to that range, it would be groundbreaking. Well, I'm going to talk to Kurt Kelty. Uh, he is the VP of Commercialization at SELA, and it has a new deal with Mercedes-Benz to incorporate SELA's silicon anode chemistry in batteries that are going to be available in the upcoming electric Mercedes-Benz G-Class SUV. So welcome to the interview, Kurt. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, look, let's start with maybe just an overview of your uh, the deal that you have with Mercedes. Yeah, so uh, we've been working with Mercedes for many years. In fact, they invested uh, in SELA uh, about three years ago. And uh, uh, so we've been working closely with the engineering team there. And uh, what we signed was a, a, a deal where we're gonna supply the uh, silicon anode material that will be shipped to a battery cell manufacturer for use in the G-Wagon. And this is a, the G-Wagon uh, uh, that'll be uh, released sometime middle of the decade. Um, and uh, it's gonna contain our material. So it, it's super exciting because uh, uh, it's, a, uh, a, it's getting our material from the lab to the, uh, to the vehicle and uh, that's just a, a huge hurdle that we've crossed. Can you tell us what is the innovation here? Is, is that the addition of silicon to the anode or just a little bit of the, uh, uh, the technical uh, parts of this uh, for the, uh, the battery nerds in our audience? Yeah, so the technology of silicon anodes have been around for, for years. In fact, silicon is used already in, in Tesla's vehicles uh, with uh, Panasonic as a cell manufacturer, but it's used in a very small percent, maybe three to five percent, somewhere around that, that, that amount. And the reason you don't use more of it is it suffers from swelling. So when you charge and discharge, uh, the silicon swells uh, and then contracts. And what we've been able to do is we've re really been able to solve the swell issue. So our material doesn't swell any more than, than graphite would, would, would swell. And so that enables you to get the good cycle life that's needed in vehicles. So again, silicon has been around forever, but we've cracked the code in terms of figuring out how to uh, prevent it from swelling. Now, does the addition of your uh, uh, technology to the anode in these batteries, does it uh, increase or decrease battery cost? So initially, it's going to be an increase in battery cost, and, and that's why we're, we're, we're targeting a premium or luxury market like, like the G-Wagon. Um, and and the, the reason for that is our, our, our production quantities are very small. Um, we, uh, uh, when we start up in, um, uh, in Washington State, uh, our first facility will make um, the, uh, the equivalent of about 10 gigawatt hours of, of batteries. Uh, if you're to completely replace the, um, uh, the graphite. And, and then we're going to quickly scale it from there. So as we scale it, then the, the, the costs are going to come down and, uh, uh, and then we'll get much more cost competitive with graphite. So that's the, um, uh, yeah, it's, 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 our, our approach is very similar to what we did at Tesla when I was there. Um, start out at the high end. So our, our, the G-Wagon is, is our version of the Roadster. Uh, so that's where we're going to start, and then we're going to gradually work our way down the uh, the market. When do you think, um, and I know I'm asking you to get out your crystal ball here, but when do you think that your the costs for your technology might come down so that they would be, you know, like in an average uh, electric vehicle? Are we talking end of the decade, maybe? Yeah, well, you're, you're comparing a little bit apples and oranges in the sense that um, what we provide is an increased driving range, increased fast charge capability, uh, eventually uh, improved cycle life uh, over the graphite. And so how do you compare the, the, the price um, uh, with, with something that, that just performs differently? Um, but the, uh, I mean, the cost curve that we're going down is going to be pr pretty dramatic uh, th this decade. So we, we introduce... Um, our, our factory comes online in 2025. That's when our, our product would be introduced. And then it's just going to come down uh, pretty rapidly after that. Is the, you know, there's a lot of uh, debate right now about uh, critical minerals that are needed for batteries. But I, I, are there any of, any of those uh, in, your, uh, in your materials? The, uh, you know, it's interesting when uh, uh, the company was started by the founders, uh, the co-founders, uh, Gene, Gleb, and Alex, one of the things they set 
uh, as a goal was we got to use commodity precursors. So it's got to be available anywhere in the world. And so that's what we've got is we've got, uh, so we have, we see no concern with, uh, with ramping this up to providing millions of vehicles worth uh, of material. Um, the, yeah, the materials available in, in uh, quantities around the world. The other thing is um, they, they said in the beginning they wanted to use bulk manufacturing techniques, which allow really uh, a quick scale up at a, at a, a low cost. And so both the uh, um, commodities being available, the raw materials being available, and that kind of uh, technology for scaling make it so this can ramp up quickly and the, co the, and the cost can come down quite quickly. Now, you're locating your plant in Washington State, which I thought was interesting because that's not, I would not have thought, you know, thought California, Texas, someplace like that. Why did you choose Washington? Well, there's, there's several reasons. Uh, one, one is it's good access to some of the raw materials that uh, go into the um, uh, in, into our uh, silicon material. But the other big driver here is that uh, we're, we're able to get access to green energy. And uh, for us, that's really important going forward to have clean electricity. Our, uh, I mean, not only because the, 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 the mission focus of the employees where we feel quite passionate about this, just the personal levels, but the other thing is our customers are requiring this, especially in Europe, where they're, they're as the regulations are getting tighter and tighter, they will, towards the latter half of this decade, be required to do a life cycle analysis on their vehicles. And every component is gonna be, is, they're gonna look at how much energy was used and what type of energy was used in that. And they're gonna be scored on that. And so it's really important for us to provide our material with green energy. And the beauty of it, this green energy also comes really cheaply. It's all hydro um, and it's really cheap electricity. So that, that's, a, that's a big driver for us. I'm going to ask you a question that I, I ask a lot of the people that I interview, because I think this is a key part of the energy transition. And that is, uh, does cheap, clean, abundant electricity become a, a competitive advantage for, for states like, well, any location like a, like a Washington? Absolutely. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. If you, if you say that you've got clean, cheap electricity, um, that's, I mean, for, for many industries, that's the biggest, biggest input. Uh, you, you, you gotta, I mean, it, it's going to depend on which, uh, what material you're making, for example, um, how much of the, what percent is the utility cost of it. And with our material, it's a significant percent with battery cell manufacturing, it's a significant percent. So you, you want, when we were uh, trying to figure out our location for the gigafactory, when I was working at Tesla, that was one of the key drivers was the electricity. What, where does it come from and how much does it cost? That was one of our key metrics in determining uh, the location of Reno, where we eventually put it. Kurt, um, I, and I interview a lot of battery experts, and I'm, I'm always curious about their views on the industry in general and, and where we're going with cost and energy density. Uh, you know, we hear, you know, energy density is going up an average of 7%, but there are other yeah. new technologies like solid state and so on that, that are going to be coming on mid to late, late decade. What's your view on that? Uh, on the cost, well, so energy density is going to continue to improve this decade, but the big driver is silicon and material. That, that is the big hope um, uh, through the rest of the decade. The other, um, uh, the other areas where we can expect an increase in energy density is from the the, um, the cathode, and so there's all sorts of work being done on the cathode, um, whether it's to increase the nickel. Uh, to increase the we shall increase the energy density. Um, in parallel, there's work to eliminate the cobalt for different reasons um, from from the uh, uh, from the cathode for for human rights issues. But um, so there the the real active exciting work is on the cathode and the anode. And the anode is of course the silicon silicon anode. So this is kind of this is what we've got for the rest of the decade to, to increase our energy density. It's it's you can still work on making your separator a little thinner, your foils a little thinner. But there's not a whole lot there. I mean, the, the, the separators now we're, we're down to eight and sometimes six microns. And boy, how do you get thinner than that? Uh, I mean, they'll figure out ways, but how much of an impact does it have? It's, it's, kind of, it's really minor at that point. Um, so that, that's, uh, yeah, for, for energy density, it's, it's cathode, anode, and, and really that's, that's silicon more than anything else uh, for, the, for the rest of the decade. Um, final question, Kurt. Uh, are there any, does SELA have any other technologies that we'll be seeing in the near future? Well, we consider ourselves a material company uh, that is supplying into the battery 
uh, industry. And so uh, Anode is what we're focusing most of our efforts on. Um, I can't share about uh, some of the other things that, that we're looking at, but uh, we're, we're focused right now. Most of our effort uh, is on the, the Anode material that, uh, that you're seeing the, in, in the press. Well, good luck with the, uh, the partnership with Mercedes, and uh, thank you very much for this. Thank you. I enjoyed it.